so that's the intent of the whole framework so that it should self support not just uh, the first contact programs or uh, problem solving programs technology is uh, evolved too much to support all those things but still it's not ex uh, not affordable but through these programs you evolve your own instructions and your own design so that it becomes a self sustaining program on a longer run so this was the snapshot of the whole design uh, i apologize for the colors uh, basically it's like uh, a design to show different stakeholders this is not uh, different stakeholders in terms of an institutional partner uh, the development partner and the research unit what they can independently take in terms of these processes uh, is, is what like we wanted to represent. I just had it as a template, so I just stuck it. And uh, we also uh, determined a design for uh, identifying the people uh, who would be needed, needed to support. Currently, like uh, we are planning to bring out an organizing committee, but still the fundamental need is like, unless you have the right policies to promote this system, it will not like uh, lift from the process. So eventually I would see like uh, organizations, like committees like FIDE, uh, FIDE chess and schools, eventually owning this kind of system. But uh, presently this is planned towards like a pilot program and on the success of this program, on the success of the concepts, we can actually take the inclusive part of chess in schools. And yeah, there is a definite research and development and dissemination needs and the networks needs to be built. And uh, the blind institutions and other special interest group like the NGOs have to play their part in bringing the blind students in and uh, trying to interface them. It's like building their comfort zone and uh, institutional partners to host these events so that our focus is to have this particular program at uh, the cost of uh, not more than $100 uh, for th because it's just 24 hours program. So the cost is what we, were, we are trying to uh, accomplish. And the technology support team, uh, we are developing a system architecture to understand all everything that can happen within the system, how it can be documented and how it can support educational research for the future. So I will also like uh, walk through the instructional design methodology that we, uh, we had developed uh, originally. So it's like, as, as I said, it's like focusing more on uh, learning rather than gaming. That's, that's the principle behind it. And uh, it was more intended to be discussion oriented because in India, fundamental problem was blind people don't speak quite well and uh, they have their own uh, internal barriers and to come outside, it takes a lot of energy. And once they come outside, they are phenomenal achievers. One of my collaborators is a phenomenal achiever, is uh, come all the way uh, to become the vice president of IBCA and a lot of initiatives. But it takes the initial inertia, it has to break that particular inertia, it takes like a lot of efforts and this program is intended more to uh, bring that particular ice breaking really. And basically the instructional design is more in terms of like having fixed positions, fixed goals, and then like little bit of exploratory ideas. And the third important thing is imbalance, uh, trying to understand the imbalance because the whole design is based on the imbalance between the sighted and blind. And chess is also a, a complete game of imbalance with different pieces having different meanings and different move. There's always imbalance in the game. So it's easy to reflect imbalance and it is easy to uh, let go the emotional barrier and uh, focus more on the intelligent aspect. So that's what has been our particular uh, experience in the past. And uh, these are some of the instruction that we have developed and uh, the kind of exercises. And uh, this is the design behind the exercise and the rationale behind why we did uh, you know, what kind of exercise was there. This is not a complete set, but this gives a fairly broad perspective of uh, the exercises that both of them can engage. 
and uh, yeah once again this we this gives a background in terms of why sighted players and blind players differ in their drive to play chess uh, that is to understand different baseline and uh, certain guidelines that we developed uh, in terms of uh, when the two people are there, what are the things that we need to understand in terms of their fundamental motive is what we developed. And I just want to explain in terms of the classroom environment. Uh, basically, as I said, it's like the, three, the two hours program spans into 365 uh, um, days. It's, it's a year's program. And uh, it's not a one-to-one -one ratio between the blind and the sighted. It's like one blind person for every five sighted players. So that like the ratio gives like enough students to be observer. So our framework is also an observer-centered framework, which means there are more people to observe and synergize with the blind players. It need not be just the player who is playing with the blind person. And it's minimized teaching, and it's a lot of focusing on active learning environment and an observer-centered framework. So that even teachers who are observing learn from this framework. Ideally speaking, uh, whatever I talked, I just represented in an image where uh, the, we have the sighted person and the visual impaired person. Four different uh, uh, stimulus are there. One is the discussion, one is the touch, one is the visual, the analysis that is coming out of the visual learning and the synthesis uh, that is coming out of uh, uh, you know the positions that the sighted people work and uh, some of the chess instructions. This is how the whole system is organized in terms of energy and the red line between the, the flow between the synthesis to the analysis is exactly what the learning research is focusing on because that is what the sighted person communicates to the blind person and he does the hand holding telling that I see this, do you see this? And uh, the blind person brings the overall stability for the system and says back that I see these features and it looks promising but I'm not able to see the other things that you are trying to explain to, to me. And basically it's a perception exchange for the sighted person, he doesn't have to see the current position and get disturbed by the board. And it can be more a discussion-centered framework where they can continuously think and build a vision. And that is what is the benefit for the sighted person engaging into this system. And uh, this is the experiment that uh, previously was conducted where we identified three different groups. The first group has one visually impaired person with five sighted person. That's where one is to five ratio comes from. And uh, there is a mentor and two observers. The group B is two visually impaired players seated opposite to each other and four players around them sighted. And there is a mentor. And the third group is completely sighted and mentor. The rationale behind the system is the first group offers uh, an ideal interfacing environment so that the blind person is being listened to. The second environment offers uh, at least a feedback for a blind player that there is another blind player and uh, if he is missing some instructions, he can listen from the other blind player. So it's like a self-calibrating framework. And the third framework basically says to what extent given instruction you can actually develop yourself. So this, the third group gives like a overall understanding how an instruction can, can go to. So these are the three frameworks and the classroom itself is set in this particular fashion and uh, they go through the exercises. And at any point of time, the sighted person can walk away or one of the observers can come down. A teacher can replace an observer, a student can replace a mentor. Everything is possible in this system. So basically it's a participation centered uh, system and uh, out of the different groups, the first one I name it as a synergistic field. The second one is a, it's a strong conflict between the sighted and the blind. Third one is a negotiating field in terms of like 
when the blind, sighted players are there, we just negotiate for what best position that we have to go to. And there's a place for observers, casual observers and mentors. And everything is pretty much model, modeled over here. And uh, basically, we need people to you know, interact. And we invite both the sighted and the blind uh, you know, institutions to like, uh, make this system actually work. So this has been the other cited programs that we have evaluated till date. And uh, some of it we have piloted, and some of it are ongoing, and some of it we are working. So that future programs, we will also like try to commission towards like differently impact, so that the accessibility of chess in schools is established. So this is uh, an information on the Braille uh, version that is conducted in IBC, uh, All India Chess Federation for Blind. So this is the program, the summary of their program. And uh, there are few barriers to uh, the entry level. Although uh, 21 schools signed it for this particular program, we are still working with one school so that like every teacher are uh, engaged in this particular program and uh, we are evaluating ourselves for the last five years. So it has been like a a uh, very rigorous program at the moment, but we will soon like launch it for the uh, other schools and other countries as well. And uh, we wanted to acknowledge many people, and uh, these are the people from the Learning Research, RNIB London, and uh, IBCA especially, when the president is here, for allowing me to come down to the tournament and be an observer for the 10 days. And um, the other people like Jeremy Silman, Albert Weiss, Vase, who just gave me softwares to ev evaluate and different programs, even in Tamil Nadu where they are made just compulsory. So these are the other people whom we want to really thank for the program. Thank you.